who you always thought you could probably get if you batted well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the halfway mark we spoke about uh, putting a couple of partnerships together or one guy going on and getting a, a big score. Um, and obviously we did that pretty well today. Obviously Alex continued his form. Joel, unbelievable as usual. Um, and it was nice for me to get some wins as well. Great to get a win under your belt straight away, but is it tempered to an extent by what's happened with Chris? Obviously a side strain. Uh, it is a little bit, yeah. Um, he's obviously been very impressive for us over the last couple of years and a uh, mainstay, very reliable guy. Um, and it is a worry when he goes off the field and can't come back on and bolt. So he's going to have a scan tonight and we should have the results either late tonight or early tomorrow morning. Yeah. <coughs> Just following on from that, uh, side strains can be quite difficult injuries for fast bowlers. Um, if he is out of the tournament, how much of a blow is that for you guys? And you know, do you still feel though that you've got the kind of firepower to, to deal with it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think sort of the guys today picked up the load pretty well. Um, you know, when one of your main bowlers can only bowl two overs, it's asking a lot of the rest of the team to be able to stem the flow. Um, and you know, at one stage, Bangladesh looked like they were getting 330. And to peg it back from there, I thought was a credit to them. Um, they adapted to the longer boundary pretty well, um, and to wicket. It was a really good wicket to bat on, so I thought they did well. Yeah, here side strains are a big confidence thing, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, it, it, would, it would definitely be a loss. He couldn't couldn't play. Yeah. Oh, and what was the thinking behind leaving out Adil at this late stage? Yeah, um, we felt, given uh, the opposition playing against Bangladesh, um, they probably would have preferred to play against a lot more spin as opposed to four quicks and obviously Ben. Um, so that contributed to what we wanted to, how we wanted to balance the side and how we sort of foreseen them playing. You know, their top three batters are lefties, um, and the possibility of getting Joe or Mo on early was an option. Oh, and firstly, how's Joe's calf? And secondly, do you think the rule about runners needs to be looked at? Because clearly that wasn't, he wasn't getting any advantage from that injury and it could have been something that got worse. Um, I don't know if it needs to be looked at. Um, it, was, it was changed, I think, because too many people were taking advantage of it. And I thought that was a, a good change for the game. Um, Joe is all right. He wasn't in extreme pain. He, he, it was manageable. So given that we have four days between now and the next game, um, hopefully he'll rest up well and, and be fully fit. Um, Owen, you, you, when you sat here yesterday, you, you said that um, Jason Roy was sort of guaranteed his place for the rest of the tournament. He obviously had another disappointing innings. Does that remain the case going into the next game on Tuesday? It certainly does. Um, I thought he was terribly unlucky today to get us. Uh, you know, it was quite smart bowling slow ball from the opening bowler um, and brave. It was, a, it was a big gamble, but you know that sort of stuff can happen. You can get out in that sort of fashion um, when you're short on runs. But yeah, certainly we believe in. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you talked about uh, restricting Bangladesh to a manageable total. Uh, uh, the, when uh, when Tamim was uh, nearing his century, I think it took a lot of balls to get from 84 to 100. That probably that success in slowing him down probably contributed to the to your success overall in restricting Bangladesh. Yeah, I think two, two things. Obviously, when you have an in batsman in, it can be very destructive, uh, particularly at that period when he's obviously 80 or goes on to get 100 and pass then. But I thought our bowlers did really well, um, managing his strike rate and then taking two wickets on the bounce, so Liam did a great job. John and Jonathan, we'll take one more. <coughs> uh, just on Chris, is it something that he'd been feeling, or it just suddenly suddenly went to him? Absolutely nothing. He was chomping at the bit to play. If we if we rushed him, he might have played the last game of the one-day series, but we didn't want to rush him. Jonathan? Uh, Owen, you saw with a deal, you said that you, you're quite happy to shuffle the, the, the bowling pack according to, to conditions and the opposition. Uh, meanwhile, the batting order seems to be quite quite set in stone. How, how do you kind of how, how do you explain that discrepancy? Um, I suppose we're trying to do two different things really. With the batting, obviously, uh, part of the freedom in which we're able to play with is backed up with selection. I mean, you can't guys 
ask guys to go out and play positive cricket and whack it everywhere that you know as an element a high risk element and then drop them as soon as they're lacking runs you know in previous teams that has happened and we don't want it to happen we want to reinforce confidence so the guys can go out and we can make 300 an easy score to get by playing real positive cricket and contributing to that both as a, a captain and, and coach and selectors by backing your own players up yes sir well, on uh, the kind of wicket we have seen in England right now, do you think in this tournament chasing is going to be the trend as teams tend to chase down three, 300, 320 quite easy? I think it will. Um, not, on, not just because of that. I think the early start is a, um, will contribute to that. If you look at the last Champions Trophy, that was a, a big factor as well. Um, sides were looking to bowl first because of the 10.30 start. I think if you played at grounds like Trent Bridge and Edgebaston and they were afternoon games, I think sides would look to post the score. Last one, back here. Oh, and after the 2015 World Cup, England have the best average uh, in the overs between 10 and 40. Could you talk about the mindset that you guys bat? Why it doesn't matter whether you set a target or you defend one. Could you talk what, what exactly do you focus on? Yeah, the, mi the mindset is something we focus on for... Um, since since we got together as a group after that World Cup, um, and obviously focusing on a, on a positive mindset, not looking too much into analysis. You know, we use information if we feel it's relevant, but allowing the guys to go out and play with a lot of freedom and and you know, take the game with a scruff in the neck and take it to the opposition. Okay, thank you. Thank you.